Good day, hockey folks. Mike here with Norcan Hockey. Um, thanks for your continued support. I haven't posted much in a while, but I see there's still lots of activity on the channel, so I'm going to make a real concerted effort to get back into it this fall and winter. So thanks, everybody, for your support. Um, this video today is something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. It's around surfing. So just trying to bring some clarity to the term surfing. I'm hearing it used very loosely over the last couple of years. Everybody's kind of using it uh, a little bit differently, which is okay, but I just want to try to bring some clarity to it. In the last couple months here, I've had lots of good conversations with some well-respected coaches just trying to figure out you know what what are the common denominators in surfing what are the different uh, the different definitions of it so I'm just gonna dig into it and start going through or watch some video and have some discussions on on what it is so so surfing just an attempt at clarity so when we think about the term surfing as a concept so somebody coined it somewhere along the way based on seeing surfing so if we think about a beginner surfer, well, this is basically moving uh, back towards shore directly. So if you think about that as the hockey rink, that would be almost uh, uh, north-south or is that staying on top of the wave going back towards your end of the ice or back towards the beach. The other type of surfing is more lateral. So this one, you can see this surfer is pretty much riding the wave almost completely lateral. So going east-west. So that's where I kind of find there's definitions get a little bit mixed up is who, who coined surfing, who initially started using that term and what kind of surfing were they looking at? Was it the technique of staying in front of the rush? which is the wave, or was it moving across the wave? I'm not exactly sure where it came from. So, so there's a little, bit of, a little bit of gray area in that. So uh, that was as a concept, so as a technique. So we think about the skating technique and surfing. So this is a good drill here. Um, got it off Instagram, Kyle Dutra Hockey. So this is just basically what it is. It's it, and. In conversation with some people, I heard the term swing and checking. So you're basically swinging and trying to match speed, swing in towards the puck carrier and skate with them. And you can see the art of this. If there's too much of a gap, like the player with the puck actually slowed down and the checker was a little bit behind, so you can see the art of it. It's a it's a real thing that takes some time and takes some reps for players to get it. But that's basically the concept of it: is rather than retreating and backing off, it's swinging in and matching speed and angling out. So the skating component of it. So if we talk about, I know I've posted this video in the past to uh, just four turns, but if we think about the apex of a corner, right where the yellow line is. Those are, that's a heels around turn. So these players are coming up and their heels are crossing the apex of the turn. So that's a traditional heels around turn. Um, this is a toes around turn. So now you're actually getting into that surfing motion where you're swinging in. You can see this player's toes are crossing that line. Toes are going back up this way and then it's just a quick pivot out of carrying that energy back. And you can use micro pushes in this and some sculling once they get uh, once they get efficient at it. So examples. So here we can see this player swinging in. So this is offensive zone. So this is almost at the offensive blue line where this surf or swing in is being made, and this is on the strong side. So what we're going to get into is strong side, weak side offensive zone, neutral zone, and defensive zone. So the surfing, kind of the swing and checking, swing and checking happens all over the ice. So we're just going to kind of break it down into the different zones and, and sides. So this one is about the best example of a strong side offensive zone swing in. So he's actually just swinging in and skating with that player. Here's a little bit more neutral zone. So we can see the Ottawa player. And this is where, like, swinging to me makes a lot of sense. So this player has gapped up 
swung in and now they're riding that wave backwards and making numerous attempts at disrupt so you can attempt there you can attempt there you can attempt there it's not just a one and done check they're actually skating up skating with the player the same direction and then getting numerous attempts at a disrupt so gaps up swings in and the Toronto player lost control of it a little bit, but that was a proper skating technique. This one's really nice. Uh, Klingberg on the inside, rolling in when he sees that, that puck coming to it's Forsberg there. So another good swing in check. That's a, a neutral zone. Neutral zone surf. Another neutral zone surf. We're going to watch this player here. come in, make their swing in or surf. So this is all strong side stuff. So where it kind of gets into a little bit more complicated is back towards the defensive blue line. So now we're at Sweden's blue line. I think it's uh, Hedman here. So he's actually, he has inside position and he's going to swing out a little bit, but this is where it gets a little bit gray is this is almost just a pivot. So here he pivots and goes at the player. He takes one little step up ice. So right here he steps up ice a little bit just to close that gap, but now he's just swinging in and skating forward. So that's almost a pivot. So I don't know if that can be classified as surfing or not, and I know that's that's one of the ones that keeps stepping, kind of standing out to me is people using the term surfing when it's just a pivot at the defensive blue line and turning and skating towards the, the puck carrier. So another example of it, we're going to be watching the Detroit player here. So he gets to the middle of the ice, and then comes back, works his way to the outside, and then there's just a pivot. So he's got his stick back trying to protect the protect the lane, and now he's going into a pivot and turning this way. You can see the puck carrier reads that, but it's just basically a pivot and a reach. And I'm, I'm finding that that's actually being classified as surfing by some people, and to me that's not really a surf. That's just skating backwards, pivoting, going for a check. So I don't know, you know, again, I'm not right and wrong on this, I'm just trying to show all the examples and, and throw in some of my opinion too. So that one to me is not a surf. So this one, um, Caleb Jones is a real interesting study. So when he first got called up to Edmonton, I think they asked him to possibly surf or to defend the blue line or neutral zone differently than what he was used to because he was trying to do this swing and checking or surfing rather than just retreating but his angles were so he'd come up and he'd turn and go straight at the checker rather than come up and turn and start skating back with the checker and have those numerous attempts at disrupt while skating back this way with the checker he was Kind of doing the all or nothing check where he was coming in and going for it and if he got it great if he didn't then so be it so he got burned on a couple of them where he was going for the all or nothing check you can see his momentum didn't turn and go with this with the puck carrier he really went for the check directly so right here you can see him engage and start skating forwards where again if we're looking for that real swing and checking we should be seeing an arc and a skate with rather than an arc and skate at. So he turns and skates directly kind of at him. He turns a little bit, but he doesn't keep his momentum up and lets that player get past. So now we're going to look at um, this. Nick Jarmelson does this really well over the years. I've always liked his game. So we'll watch him, and this is this is me prototypical swing and checking. So he's, I'm not exactly sure, just because this is you don't see everything that's happening in this video, but it looks like he's the last man back. 
because we've got a four on four down low so it's just basically a one on one up high he's kind of playing the middle position and sees the puck coming up to Cassian and he just swings almost like he's coming from the weak side but he's actually the last man back so he is strong side and that's prototypical swing and checking or surfing to me where you're gapping up you're skating with that player I'm just gonna rewind it here one more look at that gap up turn skate with him and now he's got his first disrupt attempt if he misses that one his body and his momentum is still in good position to defend or even turn backwards and go into a retreat but he never loses body position where we watched that drill the kids that were doing it they were actually getting below this checker so if Charmelson swung in too far below well now Cassian's got to step on him can possibly possibly win that race where I think it's really important when you're working on this to have players try to stay in front and ride that wave again almost using that concept of surfing where Cassian is the wave or the rush is the wave and you just want to be surfing on the front of it you never want to get caught up in the wave or behind the wave you want that wave pushing you forward so again he's got body position he's got defense defensive side position and now he just skates with him and he always maintains that good body position I think that's the key to swing and checking or surfing personally another good example of it so this one we'll watch uh, swing in here again he's actually swinging in and trying to take away that that centerman when he's coming from the weak side so depending on the other team's breakout, of course, if they if they slash, like most teams now are slashing their weak side wingers, so that's where you're seeing the weak side surfing in the offensive zone come in. But if somebody were to switch back to sending a stretch weak side winger, uh, I don't think weak side surfing would work very well. Another example of it, so puck's turned up, and you can see weak side surf again. Same guy is coming in and mirroring his check. Because everybody is going this way all the North America players are all on one side of the ice so there's no point in in uh, players staying over on the weak side so he just comes in and mirrors skates right along with that center swing and ends up having a good enough gap that he can actually pick that puck up and make a play with it so this one um, a good friend of mine who coaches the Fort Sask uh, U17 or U16 team last year, I guess, sent these over. And uh, he uses a, a weak side uh, overlap or a weak side surf. So this is another terminology where I've heard it called surfing as a weak side defenseman coming across to make the play. And I've also heard it called overlap too. So we'll just take a look at that. So you can see the puck is breaking out. Um, the Grand Prairie player is going to get it and head up ice with it. He's all by himself. That's the one thing to keep in mind here is uh, where his support is. So his support is quite a bit farther behind. He's got all his players back there. So he's basically by himself. So you can see the weak side defenseman here identifies that and is going to come over and try to make the play. So that's an overlap or a weak side surf. In neutral zone. So he sees that there's no danger, he's got a good back check, so he can come across and stand that player up while the strong side winger retreats and goes back for the puck. Or strong side defenseman, sorry, not strong side winger. Another example of it, puck's moved up here, weak side player comes across and is aggressive, strong side defenseman takes that puck. So, so that's a few of them. Um, I look forward to feedback on this one. If you have videos to share, yeah, make sure you like look me up on Instagram. It's under Norcan Hockey. Also, I love sharing videos and ideas through there. It's easy to share things back and forth. So, uh, leave some comments in here, and then also look me up on Instagram. And if you want to have some conversation about this, if anybody knows where this originated, I heard that. Like I know Rick Talkett used it in Phoenix. Um, I heard a couple other stories about possible origins of it, but if anybody happens to know the source of where surfing started and we could get to the bottom of what the concept was actually introduced as, it would be great. So 
Thanks so much for taking the time to listen and look forward to your feedback.